In this video, I want to give you a tour of the Rhino carbon fiber crack repair system using this mock-up here. I'm going to be using the epoxy injection to fill and strengthen this crack. And then I'm going to be applying some carbon fiber reinforcement over top. So I'll lead you through all the steps and you can see if it makes sense for your jobs. Normally, if this were a typical crack, we'd be cleaning the sides, maybe with a wire brush, perhaps grinding it out. But since it's a mock-up, we can go right to the repair. Now, these are the injection ports. This is what lets you inject the epoxy into the crack. And each one comes with a little cap. You have to take it off. Uh, you're gonna need that cap later to plug up the hole. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna be installing two ports, one at the bottom and the other some distance away. In practice, you'd install them about 18 inches apart. Here's the two-part uh, anchoring epoxy paste. It's just a standard kind of dual-sided uh, injection gun. And this is the port. Um, it's got baffles in it so that it mixes the two parts of the epoxy so that it hardens outside the cartridge. So you can reuse the cartridge, continue to use it if, if you don't uh, use it all in one go. When you get down to the nitty-gritty of this repair, you probably want to put out some gloves and protect your hands. Now, this epoxy doesn't cure all that quickly, so you've got lots of time to work. You basically just want to get some, some of the anchoring paste on the outside. It's important that you keep that middle hole open, and I find that a skewer or some kind of little wooden sliver thing helps because it, um, it makes sure that it stays open and it also helps to hold it in place while we do the rest of the work. More anchoring paste now goes on the crack. The purpose of this is to contain the epoxy that we will be injecting later. That's different stuff than this and we need to contain it otherwise it's not going to fill the crack. It's just going to ooze out. So. We don't need to go very deep with this. We're just creating a sealing skin over things. Now you want to go over the lip of these injection ports because you don't want that to leak or to go anywhere. We want it completely sealed in. Now it's time to inject the crack with the structural epoxy. But you see that the dual cartridge has different sizes here. So I have to change one of the plungers. I have to remove this and then replace it with this smaller one here. So the tip of the nozzle snaps into the injection port. I've, I've pulled out the sticks that were here and we're just going to pop that in. Now the idea here is that you just go slow and steady until you can see epoxy coming out the top. That's why these injection ports are done in pairs and a certain distance apart. So the epoxy has now reached the top port and I'm going to put a plastic cap in here. So the whole crack is completely filled and the epoxy is not just taking up the space but also binding this concrete together. It's porous enough that it's going to get a really good grip on it but there's going to be more that we do to make it even stronger than this. So epoxy is great stuff, but it's also very messy and there's not much that can clean it up well. So I recommend you get some of these uh, Rhino Tough Wipes. They've um, got a solvent in them that does a really good job on epoxy. I don't know anything else that would work as well, but we've got a little bit of ooze out here. This has got a solvent on it and it's also kind of textured. So it's a bit abrasive. 
and it mops up this stuff quite well. Now it's time to grind all this off and to prep the surface for carbon fiber application. So we just start by knocking off these uh, ports. Before I put the carbon fiber on the test blocks, I want to point something out. There are three different kinds of carbon fiber fabric here. This is called the vertical, and that's because you can see the bands of carbon fiber run this way. They're held in alignment with threads that run this way, but it's strongest in this direction. This one is what's called the horizontal. So same idea, except the bands of carbon fiber run this way, and the holding threads run this way. So it's strongest in this direction. And this is called the bi-directional. And you can see it has a tightly woven network of carbon fiber bands in both directions. So it gives overall strength. Now I'm applying the epoxy adhesive, the stuff that's designed for securing the carbon fiber. I'm going to be just, uh, just getting it on the surface here and then rolling it out. I want to make sure that the masonry is completely saturated. So I'm going to have to go over this a few times in order to completely wet the surface. The idea here is that I bond the carbon fiber with the epoxy that I've put on, but I'm also going to put on some more too because I want this to be completely saturated with the epoxy because this is where the real strength comes. When this is all set up, it's going to be stronger than the concrete blocks itself. The blocks will break before this bond does. Different versions of this same Rhino carbon fiber product can be used for specialty applications. This banding is reinforcing a failing concrete corner. Here you can see the bowed wall kit, which is, is used to stabilize a wall that is bowing inward from soil pressure. These are called stitches, and they're a, a carbon fiber product for extra heavy duty reinforcement of cracks. You set one of these into the crack across it and then fill it in with epoxy as part of a, an extra heavy duty repair. So we're all set out here to do a, a stress test of this Rhino uh, carbon fiber crack repair system. These are the two blocks that you saw previously in the video. I've got the, uh, the bi-directional carbon fiber on here. On the other side, there's the, uh, the unidirectional, so it should be strong as we pull it. I've got some straps in here, quarter inch thick. They're going through the joint line. And then we've got a tractor here and a tractor to my left. And we're gonna see how hard we can pull on this thing. Now, I have also filled the blocks with concrete because I was afraid that these straps might just pull through the webbing on the concrete block. So we're all full, and we're ready to put some stress on this. Something was going to break here. Maybe the blocks, the center part, but as you saw, there's absolutely no breakage at all. Uh, it's flipping around like I don't know what. We've bent the straps. You saw the wheel spinning. We just can't get it apart. So 
I think it really is true what they say, that this stuff is stronger than the masonry that it reinforces.